Hey, what's up, nerds? Radio Free Hammer Hall back. And today, I want to talk about your dice. Um, we often blame things on the dice in uh, tabletop games. And uh, today, I want to just kind of tell everybody, maybe it is your dice. So, most tabletop games, tabletop war games in particular, uh, you know, we use six-sided dice. Other games like, uh, you know, um, role-playing games use, you know, D10s, D20s very frequently. Uh, and people will often complain about having bad luck or blame their dice for things. But uh, the truth is that sometimes it really is your dice. And I'm going to go through and explain why that might be the case and how to... Uh, find dice that are hopefully at least closer to being uh, fair dice than uh, what you might be using now. So there's an important distinction here that I want to make right off the top. Uh, there's a difference between just having unfair dice and having... So let's first look at the most serious of dice, uh, the casino dice or... The dice that you would use at a craps table. Personally, uh, craps is my favorite casino game, uh, so I have a decent amount of experience with it. Um, you know, living in Connecticut, having I think it last time I checked it was the second and third largest casinos in the world, uh, about an hour away from my house. Um, it is, uh, you know, it's something we do now and then. Um, the common characteristics you're going to see in virtually all casino dice. They're translucent, so you can see through them. Uh, more importantly, you can see inside them. Um, they're perfectly square. Uh, they, they have no beveled edges. The corners are perfectly squared off. The edges are perfectly squared off. The faces are perfectly flat. They are as close to perfect cubes as you can get. Um, the pips are not engraved into the dice. They are painted onto them or, uh, you know, maybe it's ink, maybe it's uh, laser etched. I don't know. Uh, but they are definitely not uh, what you pick, typically get out of your, uh, you know, board game dice that have the, the pips drilled into them and then painted. Um these casino dice are regularly tested for their balance. They have special devices to do so. Um, if uh, the dice fall out of play, like they bounce out of the gaming table, uh, they're always retested um, and the roll is no good and you have to re-roll. Um, and the important thing here is that... Um, why this kind of doesn't really apply that well to, um, or these particular dice don't apply that well to tabletop wargaming, is, you know, th the rules of craps require a long throw, they have to bounce, and they have to rebound off the edge of the table, and the edge of the table is, it's a bunch of little uh, pyramid shapes, um, all on the edge, kind of like, imagine like what like a soundproof room looks like if you haven't ever been to a craps table. Um, so they're bouncing off of a wall that is not flat. It is a wall that is going to make it bounce off in odd directions to get extra randomness. So going more into why not just use casino dice uh, for tabletop wargaming. First of all, they're expensive. Um, it, they're definitely a lot more expensive than, you know, the, the typical stuff that you would pick up at your gaming store. They're also larger. Um, they're typically 19 millimeter dice. Uh, your large gaming dice are 16 millimeter and your small are 12 millimeter. So there's a pretty substantial size difference there. Um, and the big problem is that the squared edges and the squared corners um, actually make for unfair dice rolls in... Uh, tabletop war games because craps rules and dice are kind of designed together to create that randomness uh, we we don't have 
like that long table with the special backboard to randomize the dice. So people will tend to roll them or drop them. Um, they're big, so it's hard to roll around stuff. Um, it's hard to get enough dice when you have big rolls to make. Um, and your tendency then would be to kind of like drop them instead of rolling them. And that is going to make the dice slide or just drop flat, uh, which is uh, also less random. So what we want to do is find the happy medium between the casino dice and the crappy dice you're probably using. So what makes good gaming dice? Uh, you want them to be translucent. Why do you want them to be translucent? Uh, first of all, they're going to be a higher grade of material. Um, they're going to be, you know, a consistent density the whole way through. Uh, and if you have bad dice, you'll be able to actually look at the die and see it. You'll be able to see um, inclusions in the dice. So, you know, a, a other material that slipped into the batch. Um, you'll see bubbles inside of it. Um, any other irregularities you'll be able to just see by taking a look at the die. Um, and that's very important. Um, single color dice, also very important. The differences in color can mean that the different materials used to make the dice are different densities. Um, the other thing that I just wanted to back up real quick on about translucent dice is the problem with opaque dice is often that they're not the same material all the way through. Um, and I'll get into that a little bit more on the next slide. Um, so for the pips on your dice, you want them to either be shallow engraved or not engraved into the dice at all. Um, having them non-engraved is kind of hard to find sometimes, so I would personally go with ones that are just not engraved much so that the balance is still right, relatively on point. Um, smaller size dice is my personal preference. Uh, they're easier to roll in large quantities. They're lighter, so they're going to bounce around more, and they're not going to have like that drop effect. Um, so my personal preference, my personal recommendation that I am not in any way paid to say, um, I would recommend the Chessex 12 meter, millimeter translucent dice. Um, that's what I use. They're generally very fair. Um, they come up with, you know, basically the expected results. Um, very frequently, as you all probably know, I'm a math guy, and if my dice were not producing the results that I expected them to, I would be suspicious of something. So, what you want to avoid? Um, opaque dice. All of those bubbles and inclusions that I was previously talking about, uh, you can't see them if your dice are opaque. Uh, they're typically made of cheaper materials, uh, than your uh, translucent dice are. Uh, the core may be a different material than the rest of the die uh, on the outside. So it may have like a chalky sort of uh, core and a hard casing on the outside. Uh, you'll see in the picture to the right, um, a multicolor opaque die. Um, and you can see all of the inclusions and bubbles inside of that. And uh, that's actually a screenshot from a video um, that I'll link below um, of somebody actually, you know, cutting open dice and testing dice and seeing why they might roll poorly. Um, but that uh, material in the inside is also like chalky. Um, so it's definitely like an uneven density and it's all sorts of problems. It's also a multicolor die, so the different materials may have uh, different densities, different weights. Uh, that's very important. Um, other thing to avoid is your bespoke dice. So dice that are unusual shapes, you know, the dice that aren't like perfect cubes, things that have specialty engravings of some sort, uh, unusual designs, and the big red flag that I have to put out there for everybody is this is most of Games Workshop's dice. Um, and I don't really mean this as like a criticism of Games Workshop that they're like just making bad dice to make bad dice. Um, 
they are a company that has long seen themselves as a uh, model making company, not a game making company. And that really shows in their dice as well. Uh, they make dice more to look cool than to be fair. Um, so I have heard for a long time, many people complain about uh, their games workshop dice not rolling as expected. Um, and this, it, all of these reasons are why. They, they break all the rules. Um, it, you know, the example to the right here is the new Skaven dice. Um, the pips are a different material. They're inset. They're, uh, they have a special symbol on the six. They um, aren't perfectly square, as you can see in the just from the pictures. That they're, um, I don't know, they look very Skaven-y, which is cool and all that. But it makes for bad gaming dice. Um, it, and that's, you know, Games Workshop's gig is not in making perfectly fair dice. So I just wanted to make that clear that it's really not a knock on Games Workshop saying that they're making crappy dice intentionally or something like that. Um, they're making cool looking dice. Um, and they're not as concerned with the gameplay aspect of them. So they're probably not that concerned with testing them for fairness and things like that. So speaking of testing dice, there's a couple of different ways that you can actually test dice to see if they're fair. Um, the way they'll do it at the casino are dice calipers. Um, they put the die in the little clamp and they spin it and it should just come to an even stop. If it wobbles at the uh, end of the spin, you can tell it's unbalanced that way. Um, because it's not coming to like a smooth stop. There's something weighted that's making it bounce back in the other direction. Um, dice calipers are expensive. I took a quick look online. They're like 50 bucks and up. Um, so this is only if you're like super serious about uh, your dice. Um, if you are concerned about your dice, you can do the salt water test. Uh, basically, you just take warm water and you add salt in it until uh, you get the salinity up high enough that your dice will float uh, at the top and you just kind of roll them in the water a few times and if the die keeps coming up with the same result over and over again it's a weighted die and it's not good uh, fair dice will roll randomly so it, it it's pretty easy to tell um, you know you're just using the kind of properties of water to uh, let the uh, the lighter side of the die pop to the top. So that is uh, a pretty good, easy way to uh, check your dice at home if that's what you want to do. Um, I think overall, the easiest thing to do rather than like checking your dice for fairness is just, just buy dice that have the qualities that we know are uh, going to make for good dice. Um, sometimes they're a little bit more expensive. It's worth it. Um, you know, your dice really may be against you. Uh, and just a note for competitive play in the future. Um, you know, dice are part of your tools of the game. Um, and playing with dice that are uneven or, or unbalanced is like using a measuring tape that's not accurate. Um, in collectible card games, they have standards in competitive play about your sleeves. Um, I would anticipate in comp competitive play for tabletop gaming, at some point we will have standards for uh, what dice you have to use. Um, and you, much like there's deck checks in collectible card games, uh, we might get dice balance checks um, by TOs just randomly during tournaments uh, just to make sure that dice are fair. Um, and as these games grow, the prizes get bigger. Uh, it means there's more incentive to have loaded dice. So it's going to become more and more of a concern that people's dice are bad intentionally. Um, so that's all I got for now, folks. Uh, hopefully this was informative for all of you, and I will see you later.